The Spellweaver is your traditional spell casting a wizard type, creating and using elements for big effects. With big damage potential, summons, support abilities and control abilities and even some pseudo tank abilities available to you, they make a great fit in most parties and have some decent flexibility in their build. With a small hand size of only 8 and a small health pool, she is a glass cannon for sure, but her key mechanic is getting a big reset button with reviving ether, so she can double dip on many of her impactful lost cards. This makes her a very powerful carriage early on, and also a fast leveler for those keen to climb the XP ladder quickly. All this power though doesn't come easy, and you will need to navigate this character carefully. She is one of the more difficult starting characters. This character is for those who like to live on the edge, and it really rewards those with a good understanding of Gloomhaven's stamina and monster AI mechanics. The most common build for this character is a more value, control, and DPS focused build, not going all in too much on your burns, but there is also a more hardcore burn version that you could try and go for if you like to really push the envelope and also a quite viable support build as well if you want to be a little bit more healy. From the starting cards, I would suggest using these cards to play a well-rounded damage character who can get a bunch of XP quickly. Fire Orbs and Impaling Eruption will be your big do a lot of damage cards that also create elements as fuel to power up Mana Bolt, Frost Armor, and Flame Strike on future turns. Make sure to try and max out the number of targets on both of these for crazy XP gains. Mana Bolt and Frost Armor are your early initiatives to play when you must go early in the round. And Mana Bolt Bottom in particular is a great early game heal for both you and your your allies. Flamestrike Bottom also allows you the opportunity to attack with a bottom action, which is out of position, making it very valuable for high damage output turns. Aid from the Ether is your best supporting action, but it is also a very valuable summon that can output a lot of damage while staying safe as it is ranged. Mystic Ally is widely considered to be one of the best level 1 summons in the entire game, so I would encourage everyone to play it. Remember that you can get this back with Reviving Ether if it is still alive by discarding it from your active area. This does kill the summon, but you get to play it again for another sweet, sweet 2 XP. Ride the Wind is one of the weaker cards in this selection, but it does have its place. A big move to get you in or out of trouble is nice, plus it could help you reach a difficult treasure chest at the back of a room. The top is also good for collecting loot early, which will help you buy some important items and enhancements a little bit quicker. Freezing Nova is also a fine pick in this spot, but remember to keep an eye on your available movement abilities or risk being left in the dust. And finally, Reviving Ether, the glue that holds everything together. A great movement action on the bottom until the time is right and a card we absolutely cannot lose to arrest action or damage. Protect this card at all costs. Two gameplay tips to get you started. Firstly, try and stick to burning only one card each time before you long rest. This is conservative, but Spellweaver is definitely a character about finding your limits before pushing it. Don't fall into the trap of thinking Reviving Ether gives you a free pass to just burn all of the things all of the time. Every time you burn a card, you'll be edging closer to needing to Reviving Ether and then death after that. You should generally aim to use Reviving Ether about halfway through each scenario. You can either use the number of rooms or potentially the tracking stats in Gloomhaven Digital to help with gauging when this might be. But with experience and as you take on different scenario types, you'll get more instinctive feel for when to go hard or to play more reserved. Second, long rest when needed. The worst thing that can happen to you is burning reviving ether on a random card draw off of a short rest. You also have some key items that can be refreshed on long rests, so don't be shy in taking a turn out when needed, but just make sure you're doing so in safety. Speaking of items, here are my early no-spoiler recommendations. Eagle Eye Goggles to give you advantage on both Fire Orbs and Impaling Eruption is super important to not whiff on those actions. This would be one of the first items that I buy. There is definitely nothing worse than burning a card and flipping a bunch of negative modifier cards from that very bad level 1 modifier deck before you get perks. Invisibility Cape buys you some much needed security when out of position and it also gives you the ability to long rest safely as it lasts until the end of your next turn. Go early with Mana Bolt, go invisible, then go late or rest next turn safe in the knowledge you won't be touched. Also great for opening doors for your team with Ride the Wind. Boots of Striding are great for adding to both reviving Ether bottom action and sometimes just turning a default move 2 into a move for in a pinch. Stamina Potion will be essential for you as a small hand character. Make sure to use it when you have an odd number of cards in hand to get that extra turn when usually you'd be forced to have to rest. And finally, Power Potions are a great way to make your Fire Orbs or Impaling Eruption hit even harder, especially if you have that advantage and flip that times to critical.
So key cards to look out for in the three different builds when leveling up. For supporting, you've got Elemental Aid, a really good value heal, but also some good shielding potential on the bottom. Cold Fire, which is a card you'll hear a lot if you play Spell Weaver. A very, very strong control ability if you can reliably get that ice to stun up three enemies. Incredibly powerful action. Chromantic Explosion to help fuel elements for both some of your own heals, some of your own attacks, but also some of your allies' abilities to help them power up to have better turns. And also you have Twin Restoration, which is a great heal on the bottom, although a very lacking burn ability on the top. And also a special shout out to Spirit of Doom, which is a card that if you want to go all in on a big heal, is available too. For all in burns, you've got Icy Blast, a huge AoE that will allow you to flip a lot of attack modifiers. A great target for use with those Eagle Eye Goggles and Power Potion. Chromatic Explosion is not a huge attack, but with advantage could be something. Plus, it's going to put a load of elements on the board for both you and your team to use to help amplify your damage on future turns. Living Torch Top has a great attack, but the bottom has a powerful summon attached to it too. The Burning Avatar, another good upgrade on aid from the Aether and another summon you could potentially have out in play. Might be a bit great. 3D, but if we're going for all in burns then why not you also get cold front which is sometimes a little bit of a hard pattern to hit but huge damage when you pull it off for the value damage build with a bit more stamina baked in you're going to be looking for flashing burst which is a very good value attack and decent move with a good initiative too cold fire is a very spammable card and does warp some builds for the spell weaver around it it is just that strong if you can reliably get that ice and that fire as well for a little bit of bonus damage this can lock down enemies and deal damage at the same time which is a very very strong mechanic and an ability to do in gloomhaven so cold fire is a very high priority card for any build really Forked Beam is a bit of an unimaginative card, but it is a role player, getting you to flip two attack modifiers, potentially draw something good there and turn that attack two into something a little bit more decent movement. And it's just a very safe pick for people who might struggle with using their stamina properly. Both Engulfed in Flames and Living Torch are just great value top attack actions and reusable, so they fit this build really nicely too. A quick summary of the two level 9 cards for this character, Inferno is well known to be one of the best level 9s in the game. The uncapped target potential with minimal setup and the lack of a burn symbol makes an absolute powerhouse that can trivialize some of the hardest scenarios in the game. Inferno is going to be a card you stamina potion back again and again and get some attack buffs from allies too and you will just see enemies explode into gold piles. One thing to note is that Inferno is technically classed as a melee attack so this also gives it some insane synergy with a starter item like Warhammer for a full room stun. Black Hole unfortunately just lives in the shadow of Inferno. While it has some interesting synergy with some of your area of effect attacks by allowing you to group up enemies, it will still pale in comparison to Inferno's raw damage potential and its initiative. So it's a card that unfortunately is very rarely played. Although I have seen some interesting builds that try to utilize it a little bit more. I do feel like unfortunately when you have such a strong card opposite, it's very difficult to justify the choice. Let's briefly touch on perks. As you can see, this character has good ways to remove those plus zeros and some minus ones. You can't get rid of your minus two on this character, which is a bit of a shame. If you would like to mathematically do this the correct way, I will put a link down below for a perk calculator, which will tell you which are the correct ones to do, which will give you the biggest kind of average damage boost with each perk that you take. Personally, I like also going for the plus two ice over the plus two fire to begin with, just because I find sometimes creating ice a little bit more difficult than I do fire. But of course, that's going to be party dependent it's going to be your build dependent so keep those in mind but this character does have some great perks and as you can see we can start to reliably draw some plus damage as we level up and complete those battle goals as well so finally on enhancements this character has one slam dunk enhancement that everybody tends to get which is strength on on the bottom of mana bolt this will allow you to get advantage on your attack on this turn and advantage over your next sort of turn as well so lots of damage potential and kind of replaces eagle eye goggles for you sometimes so maybe frees up that head slot item for something else Another reasonable value enhancement is actually to enhance an element on the bottom of Reviving Ether. Reviving Ether is a move that you constantly use, so being able to potentially create an element to be able to fuel up another card on another turn is very good. So if you stick ice on there, for example, you can then reliably get your cold fire turns when you need them. And of course, you've also got some great enhancements on just fire orbs, impaling eruption, just add extra damage, ex add extra range onto these types of cards. This will really start to amp things up. And you've also got an additional hex you can add to cold fire as well, if you'd like to, to make that even easier to land those stuns or maybe even get four instead of three enemies. If you would like to see my full Spellweaver guide, you can check it out in the links down below.
thank you all so much for watching and a big thank you for all of my supporters over on patreon and twitch and my legendary supporters mike and truck driving gamer thanks guys i really appreciate it if you would like to catch me live you can come over to twitch.tv slash but if not i will catch you in the next video bye